Hi, I'm Molly Murphy Adams, and I'm talking to you today from my studio in Tulsa, Oklahoma, talking about beadwork and uh, beadwork and what it means to me and how I came to be um, practicing this art form. Uh, for me, beadwork was a practice that I started when I was very, very young, learning from my mother, who had learned from other women in her community. And starting at a young age, making beadwork was how I took my place in my indigenous and native community by becoming a maker of those things that could not be um, reproduced or sourced commercially. And uh, for me, that was a real source of pride and in my community that the beadwork that we made for our cultural um, expression and experiences was something that was just by us and for us. And um, and as I developed as an artist, um, I didn't consider beadwork to be something that I would integrate with art. I kept those two things very separate until I actually went to art school. And towards the end of my experience at art school, decided that I really needed to uh, integrate um, beadwork and all the other skills that I had learned by doing beadwork, including high tanning and um, parflesh designs I needed to integrate that into art and the way that I loved art to, for all those things to come together and to be cohesive. So that's when I first started incorporating those designs into the fine art that I was making in school and, and finding a way to, to balance those, um, those different inputs and those different inspirations. And, uh, and during that time, I had, I had always been making my own um, dance regalia for powwows and for my daughter and family and for community members. But I kept that very um, separate. And so bringing the two together has been um, rewarding and exciting. I still do keep a degree of, of separation between the beadwork that I do for what I would call my internal community versus what I, I display externally as an artist. and. Um, and that is something that I do to preserve my role as a maker in my community rather than my role as an artist at large. And so I still make moccasins um, and I also keep those things not commodified. I don't charge for them or pay for them. Um, those, are, those are gifts that we ask for and receive and need within our community. Um, the other thing that a, becoming a big bead artist did for me is it reconnected me to um, to my mother's tribal culture in a way that was very healing for our family. My mother learned beadwork, and then I learned was able to learn at a young age. And be, because my mother was given up for adoption um, as an infant and didn't find her birth family until um, she was um, a young woman, and there were other sources of separation in our family, uh, beadwork is something that connected my mother back to her birth family. Um, in a really powerful way that we were able to stitch some of those bonds of family back together through the types of important objects that we made for each other and that we appreciated and had a connection to. Um, and so those, that role of being a maker in that regard is, is something that is, um, has been my driving force behind learning how to bead and also a driving force behind why I think it's important to make artwork with beadwork as my basis. It's making artwork that is based in beadwork is certainly not the easiest route. Um, it's not the easiest route in terms of the physical making of an object. It's not the easiest route in terms of um, having representation at galleries or museums or exhibits. And it's not the easiest route in terms of acceptance into the art world but it is to me uh, a necessary route in order to be authentic to myself and to my background and to my passions. Um, there are times where I, I, you know, wish I did something that was a little faster. <laughs> um, beadwork is incredibly time consuming, um, but um, in the end, you know, being able to craft the stories that I'm telling through this medium and through the very meditative process of beading um, is as necessary as any other design element. That 
that process of putting beads on needle and sewing them onto the surface uh, is an absolute necessary element. Um, and it's also something that I feel, you know, personally saved me um, from a background where there was uh, a lot of trauma and neglect. And beadwork was the thing that always grounded me and in place and time and in purpose and uh, gave me uh, a route into my community that was um, very respected and, uh, and, and gave me that role, which can be hard to do for people who don't have um, deep family connections. Um, and so if you don't have a lot of family connections, then you, have, you need other routes to make your place in community. Um, so beadwork has, has been that um, guiding star for me um, since I was first seven years old and picked up a needle and beads and started making very simple necklaces and shapes and, and moved on to doing my first projects um, when I was eight and nine and then to making my first set of regalia when I was 13. And so that, um, yeah, for me, the repetitive and healing act of beading is what has um, given me a lot of joy and a lot of community and um, and hopefully has given me uh, the means and the way to connect with people and to tell what I hope are powerful stories.